Greetings, one more time in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I find it a joy to come and share with you morning after morning on this matter of the family and the home. This will be our last morning devotion on the family, and I trust that you have enjoyed every one of them. And if you feel like you can go back and listen to anyone anytime you want. And I want to thank you for joining with us day after day in these devotions. And I want to thank you for sharing these devotions with those that you shared them with. I'm looking at a song, Ron Hamilton, he wrote in regards to home and family. The song entitled, Lord Bless Our Home. It is taken from Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He said, families all around us are crumbling, crumbling every day, yielding to the enemy and throwing life away. Bind our lives together, guard us with thy truth. When the struggle seems too great, Lord, keep our eyes on you. Lord, bless our home, protect our home. Let it be a refuge in this wall of sin. Lord, reign within. Keep us strong and true. And when we need you most, Lord, draw us close, committed to each other. Lord, bless our home. We give our home to you. There are only two stanzas, and this is my last devotion on the family. So I would say for you the second verse. Thank you for your goodness. O Lord, our love was in your plan. Help us face the future always trusting in your hand. Keep us warm and tender. Keep us clean and pure. Drive us to each other's arm and make our love endure. Lord, bless our home. Protect our home. Let it be a refuge in this world of sin. Lord, reign within. Keep us strong and true. And when we need you most, Lord, draw us close, committed to each other. Lord, bless our home. We give our home to you. We are looking these mornings at the family and the home. And we are looking at the father. We looked at the children. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1 to 3. And we are looking at the father in verse number 4. Last morning, we close by sharing with you the requirements of a father. And that is to provoke not your children to wrath. I shared with you some things in some ways how a father can provoke their children. I said, don't provoke them by words. You can do that by unjust, unreasonable commands. I said, by unreproachful language, disrespectful language, by denying them the necessities of life, by not allowing proper recreation, by not giving them time for themselves, and by expecting too much from them. I begin this morning by adding a couple of things to that. You can provoke your children by preferring one to another. In some families, there's a favorite child that can cause the child to be provoked. You can provoke them by not providing a suitable education. Please do everything you can to make sure that your children get a proper education. And as they get the education, I pray that they will can all the education they get. Get what they can and can what they get. You can provoke your children by manifestation of anger. While we are to punish them when it is necessary, don't cause that child to think that you don't love them. Don't cause that child to lose his or her confidence in their father. Be sure to fulfill your promises. And then the responsibility of the father. In verse number four, bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. A child left to himself will bring his mother to shame. Instruct them in knowledge of divine things. Set good examples as a father. Make sure they don't have bad company. You know, when you are a good child, or when you have a good child, many would love your child to be their friend, but your child must be smart enough to choose his or her friends for himself or herself. Your responsibility as a father is to pray with them and pray for them. Bring them to the house of God. The word nurture carries the meaning 
that fathers are to train up their children in such a manner as the Lord approves. In Genesis chapter 18 and in verse number 19, the scripture says, For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. Train your children correctly. Again, in Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 6, the scripture says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. To suffer a child to grow up without instructions from the word is like having a garden without cleaning. Pretty soon, it will be taken over by weeds and thorns. If a father refuses to teach his children truth, others will teach them lies. If you as a father don't take the time out to teach your children truth, others will teach them lies. So let's hear the conclusion of this whole matter to children. In Proverbs 6 and verse 20, he said, My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. That's a command. If you listen to my voice and your father is alive and your mother is alive and they speak to you and they express you from the word of God, the scriptures say, keep the things that they have commanded you. Please listen to your father, listen to your mother. Proverbs 1, it says, my son, Hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. Listen, 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 listen. Do what's right. Follow that which is right. And to the parents, in Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. Let the word of God dwell in us as parents and dwell in us richly which means let it be there a lot. Make sure that we got plenty of it so that we will use wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another, especially our children in days like today. It is a great job just to be a father. You and I would fail this test without God's help. Why not just let him help you, submit to his leading, and he would lead us and our children in the right way. If you're faced with difficulty today and you are faced with all type of problems with the children, don't give up on them. Commit them to the Lord. Finally, in Joshua 24 verse 15 and 16, he says, If it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood are the gods of the Amorite in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. Set that out in your heart. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Our Father, thank you for the journey that you took me on to share with your people for these many weeks, Lord, on this matter of the family. I pray. Dear God, that as I set out to please you, that you were honored, that you were glorified, dear God, in my service to you. And I pray, dear God, that those who listen, Lord, that they too were helped in some way. I pray that families are benefiting from your word. Just have your way with us. Don't give up on us. We love you. We praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let me say Thank you so much for staying with me through the whole journey in regards to speaking on the family. You know what? There is so much more that I can share or even so much more I have to share. But I realize that I've been doing it for a while and maybe sometime in the future, we'll come back on the family again. God bless you. If we can help you, give us a call. We'll be more than glad to assist you in any way we can. Have a great day in the Lord and enjoy your family life.